PC Heart Podcast with your hosts, Vish. They're just bastardizing our childhood and the classics. Chris. Nintendo so, dogs drove me. It's what makes me want to hurt people. Radical. People in general still bitch about everything. Yeah. It still doesn't change. Let the podcast begin. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the VCR podcast, the only podcast that predates itself from the moment the title is spoken. Adam, a.k.a. CS Radical, here with you guys. Chris and Vish above me because I am a bottom bitch and always will be the bottom bitch. And I'm always in the middle. It is a, another edition of the podcast where we sometimes talk about video games and mostly go on a thousand tangents that go nowhere. That's, yeah, that's it. That's all we are. Madden's a video game. I mean, it sort of is i guess i i mean by the by by the technicality i i, I think at best <laughs> i would more wait say... wait 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 ea makes madden no no never mind i apologize man it's not we go off tangents yeah no just no. It's, it's tangents what no never 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 madden never. is more a life simulator if anything no nah. <laughs> madden is more a life simulator of you going into debt if that's what you're saying guys guys curse is yep. actually tom brady i knew it I knew it. <laughs> yeah, but okay, Vish, let's be honest. Would any of us be opposed to that? No. I mean, no. Um, you, you really think about it for a off. sec. You, you look at how much money's in his bank account and who he's sleeping with every night. I mean, there are definitely, there are definitely Wait, worse okay, things, okay, okay, which okay, is like 99% me... of all the other things. <laughs> okay, so you're telling me Tom Brady only sleeps with one girl a night. Look, we're just playing the assumption. Okay. Look, okay, I'm not, I'm not making any other assumptions. It's all. A, it's, it's, okay. I mean, we, fuck. I'm not gonna get into a Tom Brady Me Too argument. We have like several video game related <laughs> versions of this that we need to go into later on in the show. That's actually very true. So, so somehow this is not a tangent. It's still on topic. Well, it's a tangent because we're not gonna because get into this for about Madden. an hour. But I digress. <laughs> <laughs> Because normally in the Perfect. intro, we talk about what we've been doing lately. I'm not taking the risk two weeks in a row and having Vish go first, so I'm going to start this time because no, I know I your stuff. Have, I nope. have stuff to It's talk too about late. No, you ruined it. You ruined your shot. Wait, I gave, uh, I gave you one shot, kid, me. and you blew it. You struck out, kid. Back to the bench. Actually, you know what? Rudy, you know, Rudy. No, you're going into the fucking locker room and staying there. We're locking you in the locker. That's what we're doing. The locker Is that room. why it's called the locker room? Yes, that's exactly yeah, why. locker in. I, I don't know where to go with this. So I'm just going to go yeah, into what I've been doing. <laughs> so uh, I finished The Outer Worlds. That's the big one. Nice. That, that, was, that was my happy one. Uh, I was super, super happy with that game by the time it was done. Uh, I want to say I was just shy of 30 hours. I want to say I was like 27, 28, I think roughly was where I was looking at. So I definitely got my money's worth, got a lot out of it. I mean... All in all, I really did like the game for what it was. I mean, again, I, I said it on the show last time. I wouldn't sit here and tell you that it's like the greatest game I've ever played. It's certainly not that. It's certainly a better follow game than we've seen recently. That's a whole different conversation. Yeah. Um, Wait, is, uh, sorry, o Odyssey is not followed, is it? What? Odyssey? Is, you mean Outer Odyssey? Worlds? Outer Worlds. Followed, Outer Worlds is not it, yes, Fallout, it, it, it yes it is technically because it's made oh, by the guys who okay. did Fallout. It's, yeah, it's made by Obsidian oh, who okay, did Fallout but, New Vegas. So technically, it's not it Fallout, but it, the... no, it's not part oh, of the franchise. But it basically is Fallout. Like it's literally yeah. Fallout in space without it being under the Fallout license. They pretty much the said, oh, okay. like Obsidian got together after they left Bethesda and went, "All right, clean slate." We're going to show you fuckers how it's done. And then they dropped Outer Worlds, which is such a great time to drop it after Fallout 76 was such a disaster. So it had the easiest bar to clear. It just happily stepped over that bar and then also blew people away because it was actually a pretty solid game. Now, I'm not again going to tell you that it's amazing. It is a solid, solid game. In fact, by the time that I ended it, it's an eight and, a, and the highest thing I can give it because it is as good as it can get without it having an X factor. There's nothing that sets it apart, is but it is a, just um, everything about it is so RPG well done. Type game or? Yeah, it's everything like a follow game always has been. First person shooter RPG. You know, you're going around exploring places. 
having some companions along the way, doing decision making uh, missions that cause you to make decisions that you might not want to do if you want to be a douchebag or if you want to, you know, be a slightly less douchebag and just kill other people instead. All the options <laughs> are, are are given to you. And I I mean, like I said, the game itself did exactly what I wanted it to do. It was just a matter of, okay, can I get this game to be something that I'll remember? And the answer, quite honestly, is no. I don't think by this time, like five years from now, I'll be remembering Outer Worlds. But what they have done with this game is if they choose to do a second one, they now have the groundwork laid out and really provides an opportunity to expand upon it. Because there's a lot that they don't do that I wish they had. The companions are decent, but none of them stand out. I mean, the one that you start with has like a nice like, oh, she's adorable kind of thing. But everybody else is just either, all right, she's cool or she, he's cool. Like they're all they're all like was- just baseline like, ah, they're fine. There's no, like, chic. There's no, like, holy shit, this one stands out among the rest of them. Like, this is the big one. Like, I don't think people are going to walk out with the waifu conversation when there's three women that you can companion with in, in Outer Worlds. I don't think there was an argument because none of them necessarily stand out. It's basically mm-hmm. just, what do you want? Do you want the sweet girl, the badass girl, or the really badass girl? Like, it's really just that. There's nothing else beyond that. But, I mean, at the same time, they're not... They're not horrible in terms of their storylining. Like, they're still fine in that aspect. They're still... Actually, AI-wise, they're pretty competent. And, I mean, everything else. Like, all the worlds are pretty interesting. All the enemy types are interesting. Some of the boss battles end up being kind of cool, although I was kind of over-leveled towards the end. And I was playing on an easier difficulty because I didn't want to struggle because I have way too many games to get through to sit around for five extra hours trying to figure out how to do something. So... I, I was getting away with things a little bit better. They do have some interesting things, too, with the weapons. It isn't just grenade launcher, machine gun, bigger machine gun. It's also fun weapons like a shrink ray. Uh, there is a gun called the gloop gun, which basically just shoot, shoots like goo that makes people like float. So you just kind of leave them open to pot shotting. Like there was fun stuff, especially with the melee weapons, too, like the cascade of stuff you could do with that. So there was definitely a lot to like. It just came down to... By the time I finished the story and everything else that I played, I went, that was fun, but I don't know if I if I need to go back and play it again. I don't think there's a desire to go How back. I think it was just, it? like I said, probably 30. So you definitely get your money's worth now, considering that most of the time you see it, it's going to be on sale. And granted, I paid $1 technically for it with Xbox Game Pass, so I definitely got my money's worth. You def- yeah, you could have played for an hour. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, literally. But I mean, like I said, it's not a it's not a blow away game. Like it's not a game that I went, oh my god, this is like the greatest thing. And Fallout needs to wish it would be like this. I mean, Fallout seventy six wishes it was like this because Fallout seventy six is kind of garbage. But uh, I don't think people were playing Fallout three and going, oh, Outer Worlds trumps this. No, I think Fallout three is still a better game. But Outer Worlds has definitely laid down a foundation that I think it can really mess with because there's a few things they can improve. I mean. One of the big ones is the way that they do your uh, leveling up. Now, in the beginning, you have these trees of perks. So instead of normally you put points in the lockpick or points in the sneak or points in the guns, or sorry, two-handed uh, weapons or one-handed weapons or auto rifles or handguns, at the very beginning, until you get a set, like a set of them up to 50, they're grouped. So you do guns, which gets handguns, automatics, and um, I want to say like launchers. And that's all tied until two of them hit 50, and then you can start going individual. So if you want to just strictly go into heavy on lockpick, you can't do that right away. But at the same time, you're still putting a bunch into lockpick and just happening to get some extra in hack and sneak. So it goes both ways. I just think it took a little bit too long to really develop your character and do exactly what you wanted. And by the time I got to that point, most of my grinding was done because I was trying to make a jack-of-all-trades kind of character. So by the end of it, almost everything was around 60. So nothing really stood out, unless you have, like, attachments or accessories or companion perks that add to it. Like, one of my companions put my engineering above max, because just the extra bonuses that you get just kind of added on. But that's one thing they can definitely do. Uh, Some of the looting is a little bit weird, because normally, like, in a game like Skyrim or whatever, if you loot somebody, you take everything off them, including their outfit. So if they're wearing armor... You could take the armor. In in Outer Worlds, you don't necessarily get to take the armor off every person. 
In most cases, you don't at all. So you you kill them, and that's it. You kill them, and you might find some money, a little bit of ammo, and maybe a gun. But you don't. But every every time, even though they have armor, you can't take the armor, which is a little bit strange. But I mean, it's it's most of my gripes are small things. The only other thing, honestly, was that the at by the end, like the final boss battle was a guy that I really wasn't introduced to until the very end, and then by the end of it, I bait. Here's the thing. I was a little overpowered. That's not the point. But I literally walked into the room, turned on the time freeze, headshot him once with a sniper rifle, and that was it. I'm like, oh, that was a fun boss. I mean, there's a battle before with a big robot that kind of is a little harder. But it was very anticlimactic to be like, here's the final guy. Pop! Oh, that was it. That's it. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. (laughs) I mean, I I laughed because I'm like, oh, well, well, I guess I win. (laughs) So it was kind of funny in that aspect, but... They definitely could run a credit. little more with it, but yeah. So like it was I, like the uh, the, uh, the the scene in Indiana Jones. Guys, hold us. Yeah, but that guy wasn't him. a boss. That guy was just a grunt. Let's be yeah. honest. He, if anything, he was a mini boss. <laughs> that's that's the best you can give him. Yeah, I'd say he was a mini boss. I'd say I've done an Assassin's Creed too, where I just like someone's running up, bang, that was it. Yeah, I was like, oh, I didn't think. Oh, okay. Uh, otherwise, I played a tiny bit of Sunset Overdrive to try it because I'd always wanted to since the Xbox One was announced. Uh, I found with that game, much to my dismay, that I liked it and I loved the customization and the aesthetic of it, but I found really quickly that that game is not interesting after about 30 minutes of playing it. After I did it all in the in the tutorial modes, I realized really quickly that... It didn't have legs. And that really, really made me sad because I love everything about it. It just wasn't a game that got me invested because the story doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. Like it's so casual. Saints Row even is really casual, but Saints Row has a lot of jokes and humor to it that kind of like add to it. And the gameplay is really good too. Not to say that Sunset Overdrive's gameplay is awesome because it is. I mean, you're grinding Tony Hawk style on on rails and, and wires and shit and shooting at the same time, which is awesome. But the problem is, is it's zombies. They're very easily predictable. They actually are a bit bullet spongy too, which isn't helpful. And the guns aren't as amazing as I like them to be. And also the ammo is a little bit weird. Like you can run out real quick of stuff. And it's also this sense that you have to be constantly doing shit, like grinding and jumping and bouncing on things in order to unlock the powers that make you a little bit more powerful, make the battles go by better. And to me, I'm like, man, like, I can't always be asked to be paying attention to the 50 enemies below me plus where the next rail is. Like, at some point, I'm going to fuck up. And if that means that my weapons are not going to do as much, this isn't nearly as interesting as I want it to be. So I played through the tutorial, loved it. But once the mission started, I'm like, ooh, this is this is going to get boring real fast. And it did. And I was so disappointed by that because I really wanted to like the game because... Everything about it screams Sounds to me like because fun. it's punk rock as fuck. And the aesthetic is amazing. But the gameplay just, for whatever reason, doesn't have staying power. It doesn't stick. And I'm sure at like the launch of Xbox One it might have, but after playing six to seven years of other games, it's become to a point where it's like, okay, shit, maybe this would have been better if I would played it at launch, and now it just seems archaic. Yeah. I don't know. I never had a huge drive to try that game for some reason. I don't know what it was. I, I could feel that I was going to get bored with it after a bit. And I so kind maybe of, it's the same reason. I kind of wondered that, and thank God that my brain got the best, or you know, got to me because at one point a while ago I was like, man, maybe I should just buy an Xbox One and get a couple of games. And now I'm glad I didn't spend like oh. two, three hundred bucks on that shit. So yeah. you're pretty cheap now if you're still. Well, yeah, game. but I have Xbox Game Pass and a good PC, so why need it, right? Yeah, yeah. So Fair enough. Same thing. it, it kind of doesn't apply at that point. But uh, at the very least, I made up for it by now playing the next game on Game Pass that I've been going after, which is called CrossCode, which has been nothing short of a fucking godsend to me and may end up being, at the rate it's going, unless it really like trips on something and face plants, could be a 10 out of 10 in the making because this game, after five, six, seven hours, I am loving absolutely everything about this game. Because it's everything that I want. Yeah, cross code. And basically Mm -hmm. the gist of what it is, is that a secret of mana went into an MMORPG sci-fi edition 
and had like an anime aesthetic to it because everything about it that is yeah this is like is you're, you're out is right up there. my alley i mean secret of mana also has a bit of it has a gun feature too so you're shooting things along with it so it adds that extra bit of discrep or um variety there's a lot of platform puzzling with that game which is actually a lot mm -hmm. of fun traversing the map i'm only at the first map at this point i'm haven't even got i'm only level 14 and i've haven't even finished the first like main like quest line that they're running me on and just being able to traverse different tiers of the hills because you can climb on slight different hills jump across onto different platforms or i should say other like hills to get to other areas and find treasure like it's all interesting in that aspect and then the battle systems are really fun and the story is really engaging so far and the the one thing that i really love is again because I'm, I'm an anime boy i mean you can't tell by the shelf it's i mean you guys can't see the shelf because you're looking at a different webcam on but yeah. on the stream you got you got my weeb shelf over there we've and, seen it yeah you guys have seen it personally <laughs> at least uh the the facial expressions the main character has in this because they do the whole like two people you know it's 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 her and one of the person that's speaking to her and they all do the little faces and her expressions at times are just some of the most anime crazy shit like sometimes like there's just the happy i'm interested face which is like and then there's also the face that she makes when she's like really like stressed out, where she's just and like just looking at people dumbfounded, just being like, "What that like cross with that cross thing on the forehead?" No, actually, that's the only thing that's missing. But like, oh. it really gives her and the game itself a real charm to it, which is so rare in a lot of these games because they're more just being like, "Let's just put tits in and we're good." This game is all like, "We can have tits." But let's also give them personality and and really turn that up to eleven, and that's what you get so far. <laughs> and the fact I've had too, my eye on that game for a while. And the fact too that I'm, the just itch... I'm just imagining one tit with like a with like wanting to be a stand-up comedian, the one just like wanting to like pursue business careers, like the the tits have. Personality. I'm sure there's an anime somewhere where the tits are like they have yeah. their own personality <laughs> each. I'm sure it exists yeah. somewhere. <laughs> At least in no, Rule Thirty Four, said... we know it exists. No, you said. I and know what you're trying to do. You try to do a bit, and I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just literally playing. picturing that right now. It's hilarious. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the added bonus of it just being a game that's like super easy to get into. It's not. There are there are like there are boss battles you can come across as like secret quests that are intentionally really hard and kick your ass because you're under leveled. But I'd never felt like, oh my god, this is cheap. It's just like. Oh shit! I can't do this yet because I'm way under leveled for this. So, yeah. and even like the first couple of major boss battles I've done have been really fun because it took me a couple of times to understand the setup. Kind of like how a Mega Man boss always is, where you will die the first couple of times just to get the the t like to figure what the tells are for that boss's attacks and the so, patterns of other attacks. Exactly. So in that aspect, like everything so far has come together amazingly well. And then to tailor it all in this interesting perspective where it seems like you're a person trapped in an MMO, but you don't know why or who you like. You get a tiny moment in the in the prologue that tells you that you probably are somebody else and you are still an avatar in this game. And now instead of it being like, oh, you're just already like overpowered in this game, you're starting from scratch. So you're stuck in the game and then also playing it trying to learn what happened to you while also learning the game for the first time because you're now running with people that have just started playing the game as well so it comes from that intrigue of like you're a rookie to this game but you're not and you're trying to like trying to so do this flip exchange wrong. of it it's it's so interesting how that works and i've loved how it's they've carried it so wrong. far no it's better than tron okay <laughs> i mean tron's pretty amazing but but yeah like <laughs> I, I really can't stress out how unbelievably impressed I am by this game. And from what I can see, this is this uh, Radical Fish, like another reason why I'm going to like it, just because of, of Radical Bias. Um, <laughs> it's, it looks like it's their first like published game. And if this is their first attempt at anything, holy shit, that's a good, that's a good bar to set. Yeah. I've had my eye on CrossCode for a while. I think it's been out since like 28 or maybe it's 2019 i can't remember but either way i've had my eye on it it looks really good yeah i was unbelievably impressed by this game so uh 
I would strongly suggest anybody that is intrigued by what I just said to check that out. So that's going to be it for me. So uh, let's go with you, Chris. What have you been up to? So um, you know how I'm tracking how many games I've been buying and beating? And I had last year I beat 40 games in total. So that's like a little under, it's three point something games per month. I gave myself a a goal, but not enough. Yeah. I gave myself a goal of four games per month um, this year because then that way I'd hit 48 by the end of the year. No, no, I am past that because, oh, yes, because since July started, I'm talking in the last eight days, I have beaten five games. Hmm. I have been going apeshit, as they say. Wait, wait, since Uh, July started. (laughs) July 1st. It's not that hard, though, considering the kind of stuff that's in his backlog. He can easily find a bunch of two-hour games on there. Yeah, These have all been games that are about eight hours apiece. So they're not too long. But they're like. They're but you could like also like plop in like a your name or um or sorry her story is what I was saying. Your name is the anime movie. Yeah, yeah. Her oh, story no, one of them or was. an Emily is away. Like you can definitely do stuff yeah. like that where it's like thirty minutes and you can be done and you can be like, see, I did ten games today and you're like, wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> no, there's only one game that I would call short, short, and it was about two hours and I beat that today. So four of them are about eight hours, ten hours each, and then one shorter one. The shorter one, I'll just say what it is. I don't have much to say about it. It was that one from PS3, Flower. Oh, the, the, the guys, the before Journey, I think. Yes. Yeah, it was their game before Journey that got like a BAFTA award and all this stuff. Um, yeah, I saw it, you playing it, that it, today. Yeah, that was today. It's uh, it's nice. It's uh, it's basically like how to, if you have anxiety, just play that for a little bit. You're a flower petal and you pick up all the other ones. So basically like 99% field. of gamers should play this game. Yes, okay. every basically every gamer should just play this for a little bit. The music, the aesthetic, it's very, very pleasing for sure. Um, or if you're an adult in your late to mid 30s, you should play it as well. I mean, if you're anybody yeah. living in 2020 you, right now, you should probably play it. So, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, I highly recommend it to everybody. If anybody's looking for a game, there's very little gameplay. Um, it's definitely an experience more than anything else. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's more of an ex, yeah an experience with music and a really nice field and colors and it's just very pleasing. Um, the other game I beat was Jedi Fallen Order in July. I already talked about that last and week. It's last legendary. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, no, yeah, it's amazing. It's not legendary. I mean, it's legendary, legendary for a Star Wars game because we haven't had a good one in yeah. like probably fifteen years. Absolutely. Well, since Super Star Wars, I, I believe. No, well, you never played the Bio or Knights of the Old yeah. Republic game, so you couldn't Knights give us a reference. Front, like, yeah, KOTOR. Go or, KOTOR. Or like battle, like the actual good Battlefronts, or like, what was the, I think it was Republic Commando was the first person shooter one well, on like uh, GameCube. Oh, uh, yeah, that one. Yeah. And the one on um, GameCube's Rogue Squadron, wasn't that a good one? Yes. Not as, good as, not as good as the original 64 one, but yeah, they were still fine. Oh, see, I was thinking of the 64. I mean, like a blow away good game probably would be like Knights of the Old Republic. Or if you're an MMO guy, the Old Republic, which is a very, even to this day, is still a pretty good MMO for most people. So, yeah. Um, The other three games I can actually put, I'll talk about one and then the other two I can just clump together. Um, I beat Mortal Kombat 10. I went through and did the story mode. So it's so so we got to have this argument then with because Vish is all like oh the story was not as great as the last so you you tell us what did you think about it uh, it was just as fantastic I loved it uh, it's not as I think he's just mad because someone because like the hottest girl in the series dies in this game oh <laughs> which one that one the uh, the one that you wouldn't want to go down on you <laughs> oh <Holy enough>. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying not to put the yeah. name in there but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's that gives it a game. Actually, like no, that might old. be a lot of the characters. Um, so the story Okay, mode but I was saying, like, like, girl, like, I wasn't putting Baraka in there, too. Jeez. No, no, no. I mean, like, uh, Devorah and stuff. Like, I don't know if I oh, trust Oh, that's anyone. fair. Oh, yeah, you know what? That's fair. Fair point. I don't trust anyone. Fair point. I don't trust any of them. Unless it's, Sorry. like... So, I gotta have to remit the, the dead one you don't want to go down on you now. <laughs> yeah. Because now there's two. Now there's two. Yeah. Which, by the way, who, uh, who is your like? I, I, because I'm gonna, because Devora was my big like love for that game. Like, what, what ended up being your favorite character? Because you control pretty much all of them throughout that story yeah. mode. Yeah, Devora was one of them. Um, and there was another character I found really fast. I'm trying to remember who it was. The cowboy. I, 
No, no, it wasn't the cowboy. It was one of the girls, I think. It may have been Cassie Cage. I don't know. I think it may have been. Uh, I would probably say Devorah, though, is my favorite. Devorah is my favorite to play as or moves, her character in general. I fucking loved Devorah. Also, like, I will admit I had a slight bias because the first time I heard her voice, I swore it was Tally from Mass Effect. So I'm like, <gasps> oh, I don't know. That. I don't think it actually I don't think it actually uh, is. But I think when I looked uh, it up, I don't think it actually was. But I was I had that half a moment just because the way that her voice is edited made me go, holy shit, don't tell me. Yeah. I mean, I mo most of the new characters cool. were actually pretty good. The only one that I was kind of struggling with was Ferator. Uh, I didn't like yeah. that one. It was I thought it was a great it concept was... because Mortal Kombat's never had that before. I think they could have yeah. made it better. But again, I also don't do very well with, like, big characters. So that's always been my yeah. bane. Uh, pun yeah, intended, that... I guess, for Injustice. But uh... <laughs> True. Oh, Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I found the story mode actually really good. It's, like... The last Mortal Kombat 9 was very nostalgic because it was one of those time travel through the previous games kind of stories. I mean, so technically 10 sort of is because it's like it takes the it, basis of Mortal Kombat 4 and then adds a bunch yeah. to it. Yeah. So in the sense of if I'm comparing it especially to Mortal Kombat 4, this game is like a legendary 10 out of 10 game compared to Mortal Kombat 4 for me. Um, but I, I actually really liked the story. I thought it was... I don't know, it was kind of refreshing to have just different characters and the different aesthetic from everything, like sometimes Outworld working together. It wasn't well, yeah, just like... I mean, like, realistically, oh, it's the first story mode that you're getting brand new characters for, too, so you're getting that breath of fresh air along with it, too. Yeah. And uh, I want to know something um, interesting about this Mortal Kombat. The one character, Kung Jen, with the staff? Yeah. He's actually gay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's the first. Oh, uh, yeah. he's the first. I think they slightly hinted at one straight character in Mortal Kombat, which is awesome. And and I'm glad that they didn't over they didn't bludgeon you over the head with it too, which is the right way to do it. Yeah, but yeah, uh, it was so subtle that you would not have noticed because what well, happened? Is I mean, you're also too busy trying not to get your head ripped out so your spine goes through it to worry, no, really worry yeah, about you're fucking. It at was that in point, the story but... mode during cutscene. Oh yeah, Raiden said, Raiden said to him. They only care what is in your heart, not who is in your heart. Yeah. I didn't catch on to that at all. Like it was. I, so I did, but again, I didn't think much of it yeah. either way because, again, it. I'm, I'm also not homophobic, so I didn't think it mattered. So it didn't bother me. Yeah, yeah I picked up on it, and I, I thought it was subtle, and it felt very natural compared to getting beaten over the head with any kind of thing when it comes yeah. to anybody. <laughs> like even just it, somebody being overly straight or sexual or anything in a game it's just like okay like i get it because no i mean the reality is is almost like, every character in video John games Cage is not a douche at all <laughs> no he's a douche but it's not like i don't know well because i mean I the weird know. reality is and, and this is this is i guess sort of a hot take you can assume that every single character in a video game apart from like maybe one percent of them is pansexual because they never flat out say what they are just because yeah. Nathan Drake is with a woman doesn't mean at no point he's ever thought about being with a dude. There's no way yeah, of knowing because he hasn't outright told you. It's just implied. Yeah. So almost every character you see, and this is why I don't like when people get so fixated on what they are, you quite frankly have a blank canvas to say that almost every character you encounter is interested in you because there's nothing saying that they aren't. Which is, again, is the yeah. beauty of fiction because it allows you to put your thoughts, your imagination into what you play and what you watch. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, I mean, like when uh, people when people get fixed, whether it's the other side, whether it's SJW saying that we have to have a certain percentage of characters being lesbian or trans or whatever else. And then the other half, which is the anti SJW, or if you really want to go there, uh, the white nationalists, all right, and all them being like, we can't have them. And they get mad every time there's any of them. I think both of them kind of need to understand. It's like, dude, like it doesn't matter because they're not real. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it don't matter. If Raiden wants to suck a dick, he can suck a dick because he's the god of fucking lightning. What are you gonna do? Tell I mean, him to stop. They, they have never shown. Not to Raiden mention, there's in, art of every anyway. version of this anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's totally out go there. go to rule thirty four. <laughs> no, Raiden's like, taking some big cocks in his di in his ass. Okay, like let's just be honest. Alien, yeah, like, alien. Um, there's never been Raiden's been shown with any sort of 
uh, romantic relationship. And even if so it, even if he did, know. it doesn't matter because it it's again it's not important. Like it, unless the game is inherently yeah, a romance, it doesn't matter. Like if it yeah. just happens to have romantic themes in it, I, that that's fine. Yeah, and he's uh, a god, so he may not even be into anybody. He may literally be into zero things and people. He's into his hat. Oh, that hat and him have fucked so much. It's <laughs> he has the <laughs> weirdest uppercut in the newest Mortal Kombat game. It's not a traditional up, like, a fist up. It's like a a standing up, like face palm. Oh, those would hurt. That's his uppercut, like standing up, face palm. Yeah, it's, that's um, a good one. That is so weird. Oh, yeah, it, it's it's. Yeah. I still think it's a really good game. I think it's just everybody was so over the moon on on Mortal Kombat remake that like. Again, it's it's like some there's some of those games that are just so good it doesn't matter what you do it can't top it. Yeah, I think that's exactly what this game is. It's just it it was right after nine and it's a really like tough if act to if fall. Mortal Kombat nine never happened or if they just made another like Deception Armageddon kind of game and this was the first like new Mortal Kombat with this thing we'd be saying it's the best Mortal oh, yeah. Kombat ever. Yeah, it's 100%. just it's just the reality is it went up against pretty much like the best Mortal Kombat we may ever have. So yeah, yeah probably yeah. yeah. Number but I did love the game. fucking amazing. Yeah, I did love the game. I I absolutely loved it. And oh my, like on PC, it looked fucking beautiful. I like, can really, imagine. really beautiful graphics. This oh. this newest one, the more coming eleven. The story was even better. I I can't wait to get my hands on that too. Yeah, I can't wait to get it when it's much cheaper. <laughs> that's that's they really, my they finally release it. You can get everything for thirty so bucks. Who knows? About yeah. that. Eh. I also only put about ten hours into a fighting <laughs> game for me buying the game even close to it at its release makes no sense yeah i i play through the story oh, i do yeah. a little bit of arcade just to try out the different characters i bought it I a know. year later and then i found out oh you have to pay 50 bucks more to get the full full game that's not that yeah. okay i'm not i'm gonna just quickly I say it for so what we know fucking. it sounds like it's like a 11.5 which if it is exactly that it might actually be worth the price to a fighting game like to a person who's going to play it religiously Again, if for yeah. us, it ends up being the wait till it's half off and it might be worth 20 bucks. Like, we don't know. I think we're That's, probably going to talk reser- about this topic a little later on during this Well, show, we'll be I talking believe. about, like, the company, but I don't know how much we'll be talking yeah. about that game itself. But um, yeah. it's okay. one of those things where, like, again, like, we did this with Last of Us 2 and we sounded about the leaks. Like, we'll wait and see what it actually is when it's done and when, pe- when, when people actually get their hands on it. The same goes for this Mortal Kombat thing. I'll wait until it's out and what people say of it. Because if it's actually amazing and well worth even $50, then who knows? We'll sing that praises, but... I, I've heard it's really not. That's from what I've seen. What, is it not? Is it out? It is out. Oh, I didn't realize it was out because I haven't seen anything it, about it. It, 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 it was out like a month after I bought it. Um, are you yeah, sure? It was, I, thought it was yeah. an, I thought it was announced. but never, Either way, no, I don't like, remember ever seeing anything about it, which I guess is probably not a good sign either, so... Yeah, yeah who knows? I'd have to look it up. I, I've either seen way. one review for it on IGN, and give, they gave it a seven point five out of ten, which means I mean, it's probably all... okay. It's just probably not worth fifty. Yeah. You probably just wait for it to go half off. Yeah, which is not fine because I'm gonna wait for it to go like three dollars or. Well, you're not gonna get that. So uh, good luck I, wishing I, for I, that. I have, I have, I have done that. I have bought. No, no, no. But I'm saying the odds of something that's fifty bucks going for three is pretty unlikely because yeah. most AAA it's games be a few you're, years. you're lucky if you see like nine ninety nine is usually as low as AAA content goes. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe it's it's probably worth ten bucks, but that's, that's a whole other conversation. So before we uh, go on to you and what you've been doing, Vish, I think Chris, you said you had like two things you could lump together, right? Yeah, one last thing that I'm going to lump the two games together. It's because I finally started a series I've never played before. And I mean, it's extremely famous in the video game world. And that's the Halo Madden. series. No, the Halo series. No, no, no. Something we want to play. Yeah. Uh, I So I got the Master Chief Collection. And I didn't actually realize it was so space out. But the game released on PC in December. They had Halo Reach added right away. And then Halo 1 was added in March. Halo 2 in uh, May. And, and then I think Halo on 3 is Ju- about to be released, I think, now. Yeah, July 14th or 17th. I can't remember which of the two days. Which uh, so is I mean, good because good- it means they didn't rush them all out. They, they took this, okay, we're going to take our time making sure these are all properly optimized. Be- and because it, they learned from the Xbox play, launch, which was a nightmare, because the initial launch in Xbox One did not go well at all. Plus, it's each game has its own multiplayer, so it gave everybody a chance for two months to play one multiplayer. That's also true because it meant it meant they could slowly, like, gradually do the server overloading. Yeah. So, 
So I've played through, I'm doing it in chronological story-wise uh, order. So Halo Reach is the first one I played, and then I played Halo 1. Uh, Halo Reach being my first Halo ever, I actually really, really loved it. Um, especially on the Master Chief Collection, because I, you know, the graphics are a little bit, you know, nicer and everything like that. But yeah, it's a lot more fluid. The music, too. yeah. When and did the music... uh, Halo Reach come out? Which generation? That would have been 360. Tail end of 360. Oh, if I'm not, I think it was. Well, not maybe not tail end. I think because Halo Four was the last real 360 one. I think. Yeah, and so, I think it either came out right before or right it was around probably mid 360 era. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the music, they like reorchestrated a lot of the music, especially in the older games like Halo 1 and stuff. Oh my you know, god. Honestly, like, they probably could have left it alone and it would still be fine, but... Yeah. The music is... It gets you going. Like, holy shit. I, I hold a, I hold a small, enemies? like, super bias for Halo 2 because a Breaking Benjamin song is in that fucking game, which is just badass. So is I've that, actually been... Oh, sorry, what were you going to say? Is that a band you like, or...? Oh, fuck yeah. Pretty that's pretty popular probably. American hard rock band. Saw that's they're actually they're the last oh. concert I saw live. So I think I saw them live before seeing Evanescence and Seether. Yeah, it was a great show to get them all together. I saw Saint Asonia, which was the old singer from Three Days Grace and his new band. Uh, I saw Alter Bridge, Breaking Benjamin, and Dis and Disturbed, and that that was a pretty pretty good combination. Oh, that would be a good concert. Um, yeah, but like just to to finish off the Halo, like. Halo 1 was the only one that as I finished it and was going through it, I could feel its age. Um, it's obviously yeah, it's I the very first in the series and the game's from 2001. Yeah, so when so you really think about it, it's hard to make a 19-year-old game not look a little bit aged. Yeah, well, it doesn't look aged. Or sorry, enough, like feel they, aged. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very cool the way they did it. If you press select on the controller, you go back to the original Xbox graphics from 2001. Press select. It goes to the uh, anniversary edition, basically 360 graphics, where they put in more detail and everything. It's kind of oh, it's kind of nice, kind of like that. Uh, is a, when it's almost 360 quality. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's totally better it's than totally 360. Up. Wow. Yeah, this collection came out on Xbox One and PC, so they've definitely like really put a lot of effort into I it. I thought they just like smoothing it out. No, they, they definitely they definitely All reworked it a lot. They wouldn't fuck yeah, around like, with Halo because Halo meant so much to people. Yeah, like you'll be in a temple. And you'll be seeing like all the walls have red, like purple lights going up and it's like super futuristic. And then when you hit select, the temple is just made of stone and it looks like you're playing a Nintendo 64 game. Like <laughs> it's, just, yeah. it's, it's night and day, but I couldn't, I can't lie to you guys. When I was playing, I would get to a certain area. I'd be like, fuck it. Let's play this. Like I am playing N64 and Xbox and I'd hit select and I would play for like just five minutes on the old graphics, just to, feel like i was actually playing a game from 2001 yeah because i wanted to which i can see always get down behind because that's awesome to be able to just to go back re because you realize oh i'm playing a game from 2001 yeah well i not with the, the graphics i really didn't mind but i mean i'm usually like that i don't mind older graphics if they've been made to fit with a current tv if the For mechanics me, are okay well you you can definitely tell like that, that it's a first person shooter that was built for 20 year old like systems yeah so oh, it's yeah. definitely not as fluent as it is, say, now. Yeah, I just found that with one, Halo 1, which, I mean, it's understandable. It's their first game. It's from 2001. You, like, get to a big open area, and it's like, okay, there's three objectives. You have to go to this spot, defend there for two minutes. Go to this other spot, defend for two minutes. Go to this other spot, defend for two minutes. Okay, now keep walking down the map. Okay, now stay here. Now here's 400 fucking enemies. Fight them. Halo Reach had a lot more to its story and a lot more different mechanics you'd be like flying here go into this building go into like a futuristic nightclub to shut off this generator that that's era, they didn't go i felt like they did besides metal gear solid they didn't go so hardcore and deep into creating a real story oh no halo's until, got actually oh, no, it's got halo's a, got a it's really interesting a, story yeah mm -hmm. it has a really good story it was just more you could see they had limitations what they could do probably with the hardware at the time. Yeah, I mean, realistically, so there were there so weren't a lot maps. of cutscenes in like back then, but a lot of it was done through the uh, the narrator or essentially Cortana, your AI assistant, who pretty much gives you most it's of the Microsoft theory. Yeah, I mean, basically, like they you get most of it through what she says to you as she describes what she knows about the area you're in. Yeah, they, but for the Master Chief Collection, they added cutscenes all throughout the first game too. Oh, I didn't know that. That's even better. Yeah. 
And in each level, there's in each mission, there's a terminal. And when you go and check it out, it gives you a cutscene video of that um, little monitor guy, whatever his name, he, yeah, whatever, the flying computer guy. I'll try not to spoil too much. Um, but it shows him and his past from like, like 30,000 years ago or like whatever it was. And it was like kind of how the halo was being built. Like it was really, really cool. But I'm trying to get through it because I want to see this whole series. It's a piece of gaming history, basically. And I've always wanted to play Halo 2 and 3 because I've heard that they are basically the best of the best in Halo. Story. I've, I've heard Halo 2 is like, it it blew the gaming world away. I mean, the, the original one did, and then Halo 2 just basically said, okay, let's make it even better. I mean, Ron Perlman is a voice in Halo 2. When he even just Keith heard that, David like, is a voice. Fucking, sign me up. Oh, just my Keith lens. fucking David too. Yeah, yeah. Who? Um, Keith David. Goliath. What? Goliath from Gargoyles. Oh, like I was not good thinking that far. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it is. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. Who no, Keith, Keith David is the uh, Goliath. Uh, oh, okay. 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 That's so, like yeah. Goliath. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, Halo is fantastic, and I can't wait to play too. I'm doing like Halo, another game, Halo, another game, because on July 14th, Halo 3 is being added, and that's my fourth Halo game. If all goes according to plan, I'm going to beat like 10 fucking games this month. <laughs> I mean, that's insane. Plus. Yeah, I'm already at like 33, and I only have to get to 40 by the end of the year. I think I'm going to go past it. So uh, hmm. then, then there's this guy here that doesn't get past anything because he never plays anything. But apparently, he did something this time. So uh, what the hell have you been so, doing apart from not watching the Expanse? Yeah, it's definitely not the Expanse. Well, I watched one show today. It was um, a sci-fi show, and they had a sex scene in zero gravity <gasps> in the very first episode. Uh, the guy who played the Punisher is in there. In oh the my show. god. Holy shit. Uh, I thought you were show saying... called again. What's the show called again? The holy uh, shit, now we can't sell a t-shirt anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody's gotta call yeah. PR. So you finally so started I it. I uh watched a little bit of it on So how many episodes? Uh, episode zero point six six. So you're two thirds into the first episode. You didn't even finish an yes, episode yet. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> Jesus um, Christ. We I, can't even get this guy to watch an e a full episode yet. But I, uh, I started my anime month. So yesterday I watched Princess Manioki, and mm. today I watched Bearded Away. Oh wow. Okay. Am I um am I fucking stupid or something? Like, I didn't really get Princess Manioki. I, I mean, to let's be completely again. honest. Most of us didn't get any of the Ghibli movies we watched. We were just so mesmerized by what was going on. Yeah. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's so well like, done. Like, I couldn't I, tell a... you what Spirit Away is really about. I just went, holy fuck, this is like, thank God I don't do drugs. Guys, you don't know the metaphors and everything for Spirited Away? My Sorry, goodness. You're, you're, you're cutting. Um, from uh -oh. what I hear, it's Essentially, it's anime's version of Alice in Wonderland. Adam, uh, just saying, you are uh, lagging and cutting out. That might be on bit. your end because I'm kind of fine, but I mean, yeah, you look fine to me. Okay, damn. Fine. Either way, we'll be getting to a break it. soon, so we'll worry about that shit when we get to it. Okay. Uh, but it's um okay. So Spirit uh Spirit Away, it's essentially from what I've heard, it's Japanese anime version of Alice in Wonderland. Because she essentially does go to a mystical land. It's completely lost. And it's like, what the hell is going on? Like the no face thing. It, it, it's like, what, why, why is it here? Like there, it wasn't like a MacGuffin or anything. And then there's a lot of symbolism that you kind of have to know, like the culture in Japan to really get. Yeah, possibly. Oh, and no, I can uh, tell you for a fact. That's probably what most of it is. Is this Japanese like, like yokai, like which is a word for them for like like spectral or ghosts however you want to phrase it there are a lot of like super old like mystical referencing in, J in japanese culture that gets put in these and like you have to be pretty well versed to know most of it okay so it's maybe like I, again i didn't i thought uh i preferred actually spirited away from princess manioki i would agree oh yeah yeah spirited uh, away is one of the best ones yeah, yeah I, okay. I would say Sorry. that spirit away is the best one 
Yeah, it's my uh, tell me if I'm fucking stupid. Yes, yes, you are. Was, was Princess Manioki in Princess Manioki? Like, was that yeah. uh, chick with the wolves? Was she Princess Manioki? I believe so. Yes. I'm trying to think because I really haven't seen that movie in like 20 years. So I'm pretty sure that's who she is. Yeah. Like the one of the wolves, the human raised by wolves, and she hated humans. But and did you watch it in it. English? Yes. Okay. That was Claire Danes who was. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I read up. I read about that, and I even um, like when afterwards I read the synopsis on Wikipedia just to see if I could understand it a little more. Like I understand, like like Billy Bob Thornton's character was a complete uh, two faced dick. Yes, and then uh, it's like then I saw like I was just like, why did she shoot the forest god? Why does she want to kill him? Like, I, I don't <laughs> see. I I can't answer most of this because it's been so goddamn long since I've seen it. Yeah. So I don't I don't remember most it's of it. Like if you ask me to I remember watched. Spirited Away, I remember basically two things: really creepy looking old lady and really creepy black thing in in a hot tub. Oh yeah, the hot tub. Thing. That's most of yeah. what I remember. Yeah. I remember Spirited Away actually kind of clearly. That's weird. I think the it's, last uh, time I watched it, I must, I think I was like in like high school was the last time I watched that movie. Yeah. No, I went to a thing in Toronto, like a theater, like a movie theater presentation where they did an anime weekend of all Studio Ghibli. It was great. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember talking about that one. Uh, but it's just like, uh, I'm not, my next one is probably going to be Howl's Moving Castle. Yes, that's my second favorite. And, and I, uh, I was told uh, it seems like Kiki's Delivery Service is an important one in the. That's that's canon that's a pretty one. good one. Yeah, I still have to watch uh, that one. I haven't seen that because I, I gotta like it's just I just want to, but I'm just maybe I don't know. I I maybe the storylines are so symbolic of what information that I don't have. I, th- I th- some- honestly, it sounds like you're looking too deep into like you're expecting this to be like some really like entrapping story that kind of hits all these. Emo- Most of these movies are not meant to be like that, like easy to grab. Like you're not watching an Avengers movie with stuff that you can associate with. A lot of this stuff is just meant to be like, again, it's also meant for children. So there's a lot of stuff that they try to break down pretty simply and not like get too crazy. But a lot of what they also do is just a massive amount of symbolism too. So Ghibli movies for me personally, and I I don't know that everybody else would be like this. Some people have their own obvious ideas of it. Ghibli is more, it's the art itself. It's the animation. And then it's just, it is absolutely honestly, it's like, it's very bare bones in terms of storyline for me. Cause I mean, spirit away, is just girls trapped in this place and trying to escape. So that's all I can, that's all my brain thinks about. And then it just happens to all have all this other stuff. I could never do a podcast talking about all the little hidden things and like secret messages within it because I I could never pay attention to that because I have to know way too much about the Japanese culture and history and all its yokai referencing and all these things that just I don't have that knowledge of. So that's interesting. Yeah, because when maybe it's because I didn't see any of these movies till I was older. But when I saw Spirited Away. I took it as like, yes, it's a children's movie, but it's about a girl who basically tra- uh, travels over to the land of the dead, uh, to the spirit world where, you know, that's what kind of fucked up shit is, you know, going on when people die, I guess, uh, or spirits or whatever. Um, but I watched it as like, yeah, there's a story, but I picked up on, at the time, I don't remember a lot of it right now, but like a lot of symbolism and like actually just not probably taking what they meant to show but more the way i interpreted it so it was almost like i was watching like an art piece oh i'm sure I if watching. i watched it tomorrow i would totally yeah. have like a different perspective of it now because obviously i'm not 14 15 16 years old i'm now double that or more so yeah <laughs> you kind of have a little bit of uh, extra knowledge going on in that noggin because you kind of been through some more shit apart from being pimply faced and trying to get a girl to say yes to you <laughs> yeah yeah, no, I remember oh, walking that, away. that was hell. <laughs> yeah. I remember walking away from all those movies. I watched four of them and uh I thought they were I don't know, I just saw I walked away thinking of all this symbolism and all this like wow, they like these are so very meaningful children's movies compared to some of the crap yeah. we show over here in North America to kids. And I mean, keep in mind too, I'm also the guy that doesn't really give too much of a shit about what the symbolism of a lyric is in a song cuz more on the lines I'm more interested 
in the music itself. So I think maybe with Ghibli movies, I might just be more interested in the art than I'm actually into the, the message. So there mm. also is that possibility. Yeah. Possibly. I just, uh, for me, it was just like, there's just some things that like that were prominent in the movie, and I'm just like, I uh, I was just confused, like especially with because uh, they were like. I, I'm many, sure I could I, look up what the no face thing actually was. I just I'm sure it's some like like special like demon or like mystical being that you know is in Japanese lore. So possibly, yeah. And then there, I, and then uh, there's my neighbor Totoro. I don't think I can explain the cat bus other than that it's a cat bus. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> well, I uh, my neighbor Totoro is on the list, and um, I don't know when I'll get to that. Like I said, I'm gonna. I just wanted to like, just... probably uh, probably after you watch another like third of an Expanse episode. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I will. I do have but to yeah, ask I... the one question, just because you said you did watch some of it, which means I know you've at least seen this. Tell me how badass Christian Avasarala's voice is for being like this 67 year old woman. I didn't see her yet. There's no like that's got to be in that in the first half, isn't it, Chris? I think so. Like the scene, uh, the, scene the, the scene where this guy's chained up and being tortured. Oh, I didn't I didn't see her yet. Is I it didn't. really that late in the first episode? Yeah, it could I, be. <clears throat> maybe I, I I I'm pretty sure I've seen up to the first half hour, but that's at maximum. Hmm. Oh, uh, so he probably didn't even get two thirds. Well, yeah. you, you get to buy episode two, and you better fucking tell me. So, also, yeah. I'll have to ask you just about the swerve at the end of episode one, which you know will be fun. But that's a whole nother story. Uh, but otherwise, was there anything else other than uh, the Ghibli stuff? So I've been playing a, l- a little bit more Devil May Cry. Uh, there's this one character. It seems like it's going to be like Devil May Cry four. Now, did it get better? Because I remember you saying you were a little bit worried about it the first time you were playing it. Has it I gotten didn't play better? Much uh, I just don't like this mechanic where each level is like you have to defeat every character, then get a rating, and then you proceed to the next part. Yeah, it's I just like a battle. Like, yeah, it it, it kind of kills the gameplay flow. It's like I understand, like okay, I like I, if the villains are following me to a next sta- station, and I got to kill a shit ton of them on the spot before I. Before I think it's safe to proceed further, I get that. But when it's like, okay, beat all these guys and then beat them, and it's like, okay, awesome. Here's your rating. It's just, uh, it's just an unnecessary bad flow of the game itself. Yeah. And I, I just think it's it's pointless. The game is cool, and this, I'm not a big fan of this character's name's Virgil Adam. I think you would like him a lot. He it's he has very unique. Uh, he has a very unique combat system. So Virgil himself doesn't actually attack people. Like the way um, Nero and Dante have swords and guns and slash and shoot people. Virgil has a staff which he like kind of like whips at people. But his animal companions, a panther and an eagle. And oh, so it's kind of, so it's kind of like when there are people that like fight with their shadow or something like that. Yeah, yeah. but it's like I, I I'm not a big fan of it. Like I think Adam would like him a lot. It's a lot of conjuring. And actually, it's I, probably the opposite for me because I don't really care much for for being mages. So it might actually be the opposite with me. Oh, okay, so you prefer like the hack and slash and the shooting? If if we're talking a hack and slash game, I'd rather just be the one doing it because at least I can be aware of where where I am at all times. Whereas sometimes with Contra, like especially in fighting games, like there's there's some enemies where they don't fight directly, where they have these weird like extra things where stuff happens in the background. I can't keep track of that shit because I'm barely able yeah, to keep myself out of danger. So it, it, it's like um, I think I'm very still. I, I've, I've been having technical issues with the internet lately. Yeah, we noticed. And you've so, been cutting out a couple of times on us, so... I don't know, I'll fix that. Uh, but I just found that it, it's... I don't know, I just... I think it'll get better and, as the story proceeds further. But right now, I'm, I'm giving it a, a, a 7.9. I don't care right much now. for the decimal, but I mean, it is what it is. How many hours in are you <laughs> yeah. at this point? Not long, like only like three hours. Okay, so you've definitely got some room to go, so. Yeah. And I just looked, it takes 15 to 16 hours approximately for the main story. 
Okay, because it's like with uh, Metal Gear Solid Five, um, the after the hospital part, the first few hours aren't that exciting. It's not until yeah. like well, a lot of those games it also suffers from the problem too, where like they got to introduce you to all the stuff they have, especially when you're talking open world games that have all these things to do. They really got to kind of slowly guide you, so that way you don't just. Because if they just plopped you into Metal Gear Solid Five and told you nothing, you would never figure out what the fuck to do. Yeah. It's not until you save one character from Metal Gear's past yeah. that, you, that the story really starts to take but its I mean, place. It, but... it's, it's the kind of thing, like what I said with Chris, because he's going to be playing, well, I don't know when, but at some point he's going to take a look at Persona 4 Golden, where I gave him the warning yeah. saying, hey, the intro is slow, but it's intentional because it needs to take the time to get you, like, used to every system that it throws at you because it's a lot if they just plop you into it so for like well, two to four hours it's it takes a little while but as soon as it takes the training wheels off of you it just it, the handcuffs come off and everything is just amazing same yeah. thing with uh, any call of duty they kind of put you through basic training before the game starts yeah but that's like five minutes in comparison to a few hours so i think it just yeah, depends on, on the game and then also with uh again heavy rain where the intro is slow, but it's important towards the overall game Yeah, not, not everything is going to be a fighting game where you know that this button's probably going to hit somebody and this button is also going to hit somebody. Yeah. Yeah. There's also yeah. the Zelda games which start with like, oh, it's a peaceful day in the village. Oh my god, demons! We must attack them. Yeah. So, it's, um... Yeah, I, I know Persona, you, you, you love it to death. I mean, I just, you, you won't you won't care for it because you're not a JRPG guy, but yeah, this is but, 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 but no, but no, and Chris, part, oh my god, I can't I can't wait yeah, to hear no. to hear him gush about this game because there's no I'll be shocked if he doesn't even think if he thinks it's anything less than great, I'll honestly be shocked. See, the thing is, I um, I understand the um, the JRPG isn't the problem for me. It's more of the I hate it's slow and it doesn't pace enough. well. No, I, I'm not a big fan of first-person shooters. They what does just, that have to do with JRPGs? Yeah. No, but isn't Persona a... No, it's a JRPG. No. It's a turn-based it's JRPG. Like Final Fantasy VII. Okay, I didn't know. I thought Persona this entire time was a first-person RPG. Why do, we, why do we let him on the show, guys? You're thinking SOCOM. <laughs> <laughs> or anything mm. else. <laughs> yeah, that's Call of Duty. You're thinking Black Ops 2 Zombies multiplayer. I want to introduce Fish yeah. to something here. So this is what we call a phone. What yeah. is that and tiny see, computer in your this head? Is, this is a smartphone too. So what you can do is you can use this thing called Google. So if there are things that you don't know about and you want to double check, you can always type it in and kind of look for it. So, so j just so you know, j I just I want to make sure everybody's aware that this is something that exists. For 20 years plus. <laughs> okay. Or get a video game magazine. I have the feeling that he's, search that he's searching part. ways to kill a radical. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Vish, I was actually going to ask for... Or radical ways to kill. Ah, uh, yes. Top five. Uh, Vish... Put that on Watch Mojo. <laughs> for uh, Vish, for <laughs> DMC5, how are the graphics and stuff? Because it did, it did. When I was looking at it, it did look like it was quite pretty. Well, so the cut. it's quite gorgeous. The um, the villains you fight so far are very. They look different, but you know what? That but that's a good thing. Mm. Like you don't want to be all humanoid, and but they're very yeah. bug like. And right now, the bosses in the first few hours or so have been very plant like. Or I mean, like they all have roots and everything, and they all have like sprouts. So they're very plant-like, and the villains though are very bug-like, but they don't really have like a consistent design. They're all different and like oddly shaped and designed, which is again, which is good. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. It seems though, as somebody who is not playing the game that much, that he might have a real easy tendency to leaf the game. Oh, wow. <laughs> Chris, he didn't even deserve the third one. It was that bad. 
<laughs> well, I think uh, maybe the I, I, I feel like bad puns they... might be a good way to transition to a break. Yes, I need ice and. You need, you need to break the ice again. Uh, I'm going to need to just put this here. The ice melts. Is that yeah, wood for I suppose it is like 33 fucking degrees Celsius outside. Nob. So. Nob creek. Nob. So yeah, Nob. Uh, oh God. thank, thank God, God I have a fan next Nob to me. Because holy shit, I am fucking sweating like a son of a bitch. At least here I'm sweating. Thank God the fan's on like everything else. So I'm like, okay, I'm not dying. Because I have no AC in, in my apartment, so it is a nightmare if you're not next to the fan. And that's good you're not dying, because if you were to die, on I don't know air, how to stop the stream. Awkward. It's running on your computer. Or what you can so. do is say, it was the bed bugs. <laughs> well, you know, that, that's, that's a whole radical, other problem that I gotta deal yeah. with. Because if you die, I'm not turning off the stream, so it's gonna be like, uh, Radical has been live for three years, 17 months. Well, that doesn't make sense. Oh, eventually, the, the, the power's gonna go out at some point. Is the stream? No, off no, right we're now? gonna pay that bill. We'll pay that bill to keep the stream going. Well, you can you can figure that out as we go. But uh, until did that the, point, uh, did the uh, is the stream off right now? No. Is it pause. No. Oh, okay. We I haven't we're officially put us to break yet. Okay, I'm. <laughs> yeah. Can I kick this motherfucker off the show? He doesn't pay attention to what we've been doing because I've said several times with the hours I did for the Outer Worlds, and he asked that. He doesn't know what any fucking game is because he can't be bothered to research anything. And this motherfucker can't even listen to when we say "Don't go anywhere." We're going for break. He just assumes <laughs> that I'm just clicking the magic button and we're done in mid conversation. So this has now become the. VC pod, or sorry, the CR pod. I can't even fucking do this right. This bit's over. Screw it. We're going to break, guys. I can't do a bit right. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in like five fucking minutes as soon as I get my sanity back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the VCR podcast. So, um, this is the part of the show where after we've talked about a lot of fun things that we start not talking about fun things because, I mean, it's it's been going on for a while now, but uh, we never really spent a lot of time. And now there's been enough things in a row where it's like, yeah. it's inescapable. So, I mean, what's the best way of putting this? Uh, we learned really in the last, I mean, since really like two, three weeks ago, we've learned that not only are people shitty, but a lot of people are shitty and a lot more than I think we previously thought. Because oh, yeah. instead of it being like one major person, it has been five major people 50 mid-tier people and a shitload of small-tier people all at the same time in various industries, but specifically since we are a gaming show, the gaming industry is kind of where it is. And, I mean, initially, it really was just things like, you know, YouTubers or people in the esports community. And then we had literally the CEO of EVO, the, the gaming tournament, and major people a part of Ubisoft. Yeah. All in the, in the span of like a week, stepped down for sexual harassment and in some cases sexual assault allegations. And that's that's when you just suddenly go, OK, OK, that's that's real shitty. And then just in Smash alone, you see the list of allegations that have come out for like different people. And I think the number is somewhere to around like 40. Yeah, and it's, it's a ridiculous. And it's like, holy fuck. So yeah. in the end. This is probably going to be nearly an hour conversation of why the fuck are we so shitty? Yeah. When I saw Nintendo make a statement that they do not condone uh, like sexual harassment and any of this behavior and all this other stuff, I was like, when Nintendo needs to come out and reference sex in general, and something it's, Nintendo don't like to happen. talk about it very often. <laughs> yeah. Like, because they like... Like, there's no issues, at least as far as I know, specifically with Nintendo and stuff like that. I mean, um, I mean, so, Zelda, Zelda had a pretty nice ass shot in Breath of the Wild, so. <laughs> yeah. That Zelda was or Link? I mean, I wish both. I mean, technically both if he never put his pants on. Yeah, you can walk around with that guy basically naked, so. Hmm. But I digress. Uh, but yeah, it, it's been insane. The amount of companies that have to come out and speak out against EVO. Like, like NetherRealm and Capcom officially have pulled out, which is a big deal because we're talking yeah. Street Fighter, Marvel versus Capcom, Mortal Kombat. We're talking big games. Yeah. Like this like isn't like this isn't like, and, and this is not a shot. Series. 
this is not a shot to the developer, but it's not like Skullgirls took off. We're talking yeah. like the only di- like I don't know if Nintendo has yet. I would be shocked if they don't by the end of this because there's no way Smash should be in this now. I'm not sure if they have or not, but I know that they were. Lo- I think they're looking into it. They or honestly like- should, even not even because of Evo, but just because of Smash right now, because it's just yeah. it's a fucking hellfire right now. It's just um. I I really don't know what causes uh behavior and acts like this because when it comes to like prejudice, hatred and like anger issues that could stem from an upbringing. But I don't know what co- in someone's past causes them to be a predator like this. So I, can, I really I can, don't know what's that trigger. I can give Ego? you I can give you two probable examples if we're talking those, if we're talking the ceo of, of evo or the ubisoft executives that have stepped down it's pure power it's pure the ability to think that they can because almost nobody can take them down yeah they think they can have anyone that they want and like they if jeff bezos is doing it. shit who's stopping jeff bezos like that's the yeah. thing right if you're the president of the united states who's stopping you so there is stuff <laughs> like there is stuff like shit. there is stuff like that now, the more interesting conversation comes to be when you're talking about Smash players, for example, which has been another big part of it. And this is where the issue gets a lot more interesting, and I think I can also sympathize with some, because I think it depends on what they've done. If it's just flirting and like her, and like being like creepy and DMing people on Twitter and sometimes them being underage, like there, there are weird things you can kind of, like I can sort of sympathize with why they get to that position. It's when you get to the rape point, and like I'm not talking like, somebody being drunk and you take advantage i'm talking straight up like you coerce somebody especially underage in your hotel room and then make sexual advances on them without their consent that's a whole other ball game let's just straight up use the example of a person that goes to a that's a smash player with some level of notoriety that goes to say a convention and goes to like a party in in a room with like a bunch of people there's a lot of drugs and alcohol going on in there and they happen to take somebody with them who is also shrunk off their ass and does stuff that they probably wouldn't have said yes to then Let me tell you probably what happens here. So, if you are somebody who is a hardcore player in any esport, whether it's fighting games like Smash, Mortal Kombat, Soul Calibur, Street Fighter, or first-person shooters like Halo, when that was a big deal back in the day, or Call of Duty, Rainbow Six Siege, Overwatch, all these games, you don't just spend a couple hours a day on this. This is your job and this is your life. These people that are playing like the guys who play Starcraft for a living in Korea are doing this 18 hours a day. They're sleeping yeah. at best six oh, hours. Fuck. And in some cases, even less than that. It's not yeah. abnormal for these guys to be playing okay. 20 hours in a day to perfect their craft. Because if you want to be the best in the world at Super Smash Brothers Melee, you aren't playing for a couple of games a day. You're playing eight hours plus a day every day to keep you fresh and to keep playing against new ideas and new strategies so and you're also doing this at a younger age especially the newer smash communities because melee is an older generation because obviously most people don't have access to GameCubes anymore so anybody who's in the smash ultimate community right now is usually anywhere between the ages of 12 and 20 usually because they're all a younger crowd so yeah. You take this into perspective. Somebody, like blanket example, somebody who is 17 years old. You are spending probably for at least a year now, eight plus hours a day every day, whether it's just playing, streaming, making content, just, and not seeing people. Like it's just you in a room, just playing constantly. Now you become famous. I don't know what, well, I don't really care what the level of notoriety is. Let's even just say like, you end up being in like the quarterfinals or semifinals somewhat regularly on decent tournaments. So you suddenly have like a notoriety to your name. You have some value to your name now. People know who you are. Maybe you have like 100 concurrent viewers on Twitch. Maybe you got some pretty big YouTube following. Who knows? You go to a convention or on Twitter, you all of a sudden notice that suddenly people want to talk to you. Suddenly... In an, in an age where you go to school for like the few hours a day that you don't have to play games and no one talks to you because you are pretty antisocial or you just aren't popular because why would somebody who just sits in front of a TV screen playing games all day be that popular in the minds of high schoolers? So all of a sudden, you have this massive following. 
And now you go to conventions and all of a sudden there's all these people that want to talk to you and think you're cool and want to get closer to you. And that in turn means that if you're a guy and you're straight, that means there are going to be women who are, even if you're not that attractive, if you have a name recognition, if you have value, if you're famous, people are going to want to fuck you. So you now put them in a situation where they are in a massive social gathering when they're antisocial normally. And then you mix things even further than that by having people who are either lying about their age or just aren't telling you and are very coercive because anybody who says, hey, I want to fuck you, are you really saying no because you aren't getting any and you probably don't get any? You're probably Me, not, you're probably not aversive to the don't. idea at first unless it's like very obviously a child and that's a whole different conversation. But if we're talking well, yeah. somebody who passes for someone who could be of age, are you really second guessing it? Because you may never get this opportunity again. You can lose this tournament, come in last place, and be fucking nobody in two weeks. You don't know. So why wouldn't you take that opportunity? And then you couple that with going to a party in somebody else's hotel room, and then you get drugs and alcohol in the mix. And then everything gets real murky. And all that comes into play. That is where I would stop at being sympathetic. Because then you get to the flip side of people that go beyond that. Because then it becomes less a, oh my god, this girl wants to fuck me, holy shit. Then it becomes, okay, every time I go somewhere, I got plenty of options. This is boring. I want to go after the ones that I can't get. Yeah. That's where you get into the real danger. And that's what happens to a lot of these guys. Because they get into that... It's a, I'm sure it's the same with a lot of celebrities. I mean, fuck, we've seen it all the time with, with major names. When you have the peck of the litter from anybody around a seven and below, eventually sevens become boring and you go after eights. And if eights start getting easy, then you go after nines. And most nines ain't going to want a five. So what do you do to, in order to get a nine into your bed? You drug them or you go the real extra mile and you get violent. And I think when you get to yeah. that point, that's what happens. And I'm not, I'm not being sympathetic to people who go that far, but what I am saying is that there is a journey that I think people need to understand because a lot of these people, especially in the Smash community that are getting outed, are generally young, or at least were young, and people did not get to them. In the same vein that we always look at somebody like, say, Justin Bieber, who was real young in the industry and got fucked with because all people cared about was, his, was getting, making money off of him, and he went down a real bad hole. So I think with a lot of these Smash players or guest gamers in general, and that includes YouTubers because we've seen a lot of those, I think it becomes a half sympathy and then half, okay, you should have at least been able to, to not go this far. So I think it goes both mm -hmm. ways. I, so, I totally do understand that some people are just put in a situation they couldn't have been prepared for. Because if you are, if I was 16 years old and suddenly got famous, I don't know how I'd react to it because I didn't have any friends up until about grade 11, grade 12 is when I really started well, having somewhat of a social life. You told us your, your mental state doesn't really fully develop until you're 25. Yeah, but I mean, Not realistically, that, I if, if you're a teenager and you're an antisocial, like, depressed, like, overly anxious person, and suddenly you go from that to everybody wants a piece of you, it's so hard to handle that adjustment. And I think that's what happens with a lot of them. And the problem is, is some of them go even further beyond that. And that's where you get to the sexual assault and rape stuff where it gets really fucking scary. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can definitely see sympathizing with, you know, I could like even just me, even if it happened to me right now, if I became some famous Twitch dreamer or I don't know, so I've, an artist for a comic book, who knows? But I start if going to convention. this podcast right? went from the yeah, no viewers podcast. that we have to let's say yeah. in six months like having a hundred thousand subscribers yeah that would be a real interesting case for us yeah because like yeah. i would go to conventions and stuff and i would think i'm a big deal not like in a well, fan expo's in november now so we have four months to get a hundred thousand yeah i have a hard time thinking that that's gonna happen but you know unless unless, <laughs> unless somebody <laughs> wins the lottery and we buy subs but uh that's that's a whole nother conversation <laughs> yeah, i don't think we need to do that but yeah like if i became a big deal and uh, we all did for, you know, if it was the podcast and, you know, people wanted to like all of a sudden think like, you know, you're, we're cool. We're like, wow, we're like famous and we're like celebrities that would totally go to my head. I could see myself walking into a room and having thoughts of like, 
wow, everybody's staring at me. Wow, those girls are staring at me. Those good looking girls are staring at me. I'm totally going to talk to them and stuff. Like obviously this is if I'm single and stuff like that. But Well, that's the thing too. We all we all say certain things. Like I truly do believe that because I'm not single that I would avoid these things because I already do. I'm pretty sure that there are a few girls in my life that I have been aware and pretty harsh and was pretty sure that they were into me, but I quickly deflected by obviously talking about how I'm in a relationship or just straight up not uh, flirting because uh, you don't yeah. want to start something that you're going to regret because now all of a sudden you're going to create a paradox and you might create some negative emotions out of a person that you weren't prepared to do. So, yeah, yeah. there was one girl who messaged me on one dating app and she's like, text me now and sends her number. I wanted to respond saying, no, thank you, but thank you. Okay. But remember, we're not talking somebody that you're not attracted to. Yeah, no. Because I'm assuming that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Very, very, uh, like straight very up, straight up. So. If any of us were single, and because remember, we're all in our 30s. If somebody comes up to us who we perceive to be a 9 or a 10, and, right. and they, and they yep. get like super flirty, here is the real ultimate question. Are we going to card them? I'd figure it I out. I honestly yeah. would. I would ask because well, here's I the thing. now. Here's the other thing no, too. I, there I, are I there would. are people out there, and then I'm not trying to like say that we would do it. I'm just saying there are people out there who could look who look oh, yeah. like they're 21 or older and are fucking 16 or even yeah, younger yeah. sometimes. Yeah. I've seen people I, who are 12 that look like they're in halfway through high school. Sometimes it's really hard to tell. So yeah. the possibility of you coming across somebody who you think is in their 20s and is nowhere near their 20s, I'm just saying there is a chance get, that we might go in that saying. direction and not think about it because, again, especially too, like if you have, like in in my case, like the last time I got some was a couple weeks ago, but if this is six months down the road and I don't get any, or, or, or how, how hesitant do you become? And that's the reason why I try not to say I wouldn't do this. I tr I say more, I would like to think I don't, but how could I ever possibly know until I'm in that situation? Yeah, that's a good point. That is a good point. Um, I know that I would ask. I don't think I'd be like, show me your driver's license or something. No, but I, I think mean, though I definitely would work into the conversation. I mean, I always had before. So, I mean, I'm gonna, I would just do but this. But then you also run it. into the possibility too. Because, I mean, think about it from the other perspective. If you're a 15-year-old girl and you really idolize a male YouTuber... Are you really going to tell them the truth? If you no, they're going to lie to them. That's why so, I'm going to. So there's that, know, there's that gray area well, where you just, you like 15. honestly, like if I was going to a convention, unless I actually like knew the person to some aspect, I don't think I'd take that chance. Like, even if I was like single forever and craving, I don't think like, even if the hottest person in the room came up to me, I don't think I'd take that chance. Like, unless you, unless you, like, unless it was blatantly obvious this is an older girl. Like, and I'm talking blatant, like, there's no way it isn't. Yeah. And even yeah. then, oh, it's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. Like, if I, I, like, I knew, I, who, I, if I knew who the person was and what the age was, it's a different story. But if I don't know who that person is, that gets sketchy. Yeah. I usually just say, hey, how old are you? Just, like, ask But like I said, they can lie. That's that's the problem, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure it's happened to a lot of to a lot of these guys that you're either being accused yeah. or flat out or just we just haven't heard about. Because a lot of the times when it comes to people of fame, like most of us know that if you're like 15 years old, you're not of the age of consent. So if you really want to get close to this person, because I mean, it's not like 15 year old girls aren't horny. You're going to lie. You're going so, to lie. So there's that point where it's like, man, like. You, you can't take that chance. And I think where you come, will fall into this thing, like I said earlier, when you have these antisocial gamers who don't get this attention, they don't know how to read between the lines because they've never seen this other side before. So they think like all of a sudden it's like a door open to them. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not making excuses for, I want to make this very clear. I'm not making excuses for people that actually get to the point of assault, rape, and especially when it talks about you know going out with minors and stuff, that should be on them to have the wherewithal to do it. I didn't, I can't make excuses for that. But when we're talking yeah. to some cases where like there are some of these smash people that have been accused that it's more or less like they were at a party, there was drugs or alcohol involved, and maybe like there were a few like unwanted like maybe a ham was on the thigh or maybe some unwanted things were said. 
but there is a whole difference between that and someone who straight up raped somebody. That's two completely yeah. oh, different conversations. Yeah. yeah, and I don't, I think it's very dangerous that it seems sometimes in this day and age is that people group both of those groups. Well, into yeah, one. and we've seen that too. Like in the wrestling community, there were cases where there's a guy with 17 people accusing against him for horrible shit. And then there's a guy who asked out another dude's girl on a date once at a bar. And that was it. Like there are cases like that where people also take the opportunity to get chances at yep. revenge. So that also makes the waters even murkier. And that's the so, other problem that we deal with too, where there's all these accusations too, that are either flat out fabrications or just twists of the truth in the goals of just taking somebody down. So yeah. it's what makes like, the believe all women thing you should it's just the believe all women should also be like okay let's get some evidence too along with that but let's take the accusation seriously that's what believe all women is supposed to be it's not believe everything they say is true it's take the accusation seriously and look into it i think what what needs to happen and i mean this a wholeheartedly and i mean this completely unbiased i think there needs to be a, a law put in where if someone is found falsely accusing somebody of sexual assault and rape or like anything that will destroy them like this, they need to serve that sentence or at least at the very least, it. like a percentage, like basically in the sense of like, if you frame somebody, whether it's for sexual crimes, violent crimes or whatever, you should be serving at least yeah. some portion of that same sentence that he would have, that he or she would have gotten because yeah, yeah. So if you, if um, I can just go and say that X person fucking grab like gave me a reach around and i said no several times and kept doing it and they suddenly get thrown in or they either like they lose their platform they get fined or they even go to prison and then they find out that everything i said was a bold-faced lie yeah i should get some consequence to it that isn't just people get people like threat by the way threatening people in in response to that on twitter doesn't help the problem either no no. Which we'll get into Most in a moment because we, because Last of Us Two is something we're going to talk about. We'll get into that in a moment. But I, but I just I figured it was it was a thing to say. It doesn't mean like if somebody lies, it doesn't mean that you just get the opportunity to go and either assault them or threaten or send them death threats. That's not an equal reaction either. Yeah, no. There's this uh, show on Netflix called When They See Us. It, 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 I I won't watch it because I've heard it is literally the most soul crushing heartbreaking thing you will ever see apart from graveyard of the fireflies life. um <laughs> this is a true story though grave of the fireflies about, kind of is yeah actually no I, I you're right i have heard that's a that is a true story it may, it may not be uh, like a full true story but it's definitely a possible thing that happened no no it, i i remember there's a i was reading about it on imdb either, either way like we're not we're not tangenting one of it's writers, we, we have way yeah, too important it, a thing to be talking about to do tangents here but it's uh, but essentially, this one is about four black uh, black men who got oh, in their teens got falsely accused of rape. Yeah, and, they, and some of them serve like forty years in prison and finally get get brought out of yeah, prison. It, and it's it, like, it, dude, the it, guy's it, life is over. Like he's sixty. What's he gonna do? When you're uh, when you're a, a, accused or convicted of being a sexual a sex offender, especially a child sex offender. You have no redemption. Yeah, you you know you know that if somebody got falsely accused of that shit, like that person was beaten in prison so many times over the course of their sentence. Not to, and we're not even talking like just inmates. We're talking probably fucking uh, prison guards and shit like that too. So here's this guy that's suffering his basically his entire life. Because let's be honest, most of these guys aren't probably living that much longer as soon as they get out of jail. Yeah, and it's just like that kind of stuff is just fucking terrible. But I mean, again, uh, point, if this was if this was a a law where the false accuser could potentially get that sentence, and I mean, it works both ways. Like, if somebody accuses a uh, priest of molestation when he never did anything, that's tarnishing. Well, that's the thing. The there, priest. there should be an actual like like punishment that is documented and actually put in people's faces to be like, "Hey, you can't just make stuff up." So, I mean, yeah. but again, that's, that's, I mean, it's, it's kind of part of the conversation, but it's more or less like a side effect of it. But I mean, I mean it, like what, what I, what I, the reason I only brought this up is because the situation of like the girl getting 
mad at the guy and destroying him because he asked her out when she's yeah no when, it, it, it it does like, go that's both ways. Being a dick. He's not he's not a, a a sex offender. No, he's just being a dick. But I mean, at the same time, too, like we shouldn't be okay with people being dicks either. There is also that perspective. But I mean, dicks, fuck assholes. But I mean, the more important thing is, is quite honestly, and, and I was going to say at the beginning, and then we kind of got on this thing, which is not a bad thing. We we had a pretty good run for about twenty minutes there. Um, for someone like me who has admittedly been kind of blind to this stuff because it's not it's not out in the open. Like I'm not deep into into YouTuber culture or streamer culture or gaming culture, so I'm not deep in these circles. So I don't know about it. And when you hear about all these names and how a lot of people be like, oh yeah, I've known about that for a while. And you go, what? And it gets to that point that it, at first when the, re- cause it started with wrestling for me, that's where it really started to hit. And then all the gaming stuff came in and then all this other stuff isn't coming in too. It's become honestly one of the most soul crushing things in my life because it kind of just makes you think, am I just being lied to? Is everything that I know a lie? Because there are people out there, and, and, I, and again, most, most of them, we haven't seen like an absolute proof and hasn't come out. Like, guys that I love, Angry Joe Show, uh, Adam Savage from Mythbusters, Cass Anvar mm. from The Expanse, fucking like, and those are just three names. In the wrestling community, Joey fucking Ryan, who we all know and really loved his stuff, which is the dick flip guy. Like, there are people out there that we idolized or people that we really attached to and loved and all of a sudden, it's, I'm sure, I can't imagine what anybody, everybody who really attached to Bill Cosby thought when that happened. It's like, what do you do yeah, when someone you love that, that much? that shocking the most. Well, I mean, it, it really doesn't matter how Where? shocking it is. Because, I mean, it, do, it just depends more on how invested in that person over the course of your life you were. Like, let's, let's be honest. Like, I had that moment of, just fucking tell me everybody so I can get this all done with. Because I can't take it. Because, like, what else are you going to tell me? You're going to tell me that Dave Grohl is the fucking worst person on the planet? Even though he seems like the nicest fucking guy. Okay, that, that there, there, there's, there's no like. No, but I'm, that's God, what that I'm would, saying is like, what would worst. I do if I found out that Dave Grohl was a rapist piece of shit? What would I actually do? I have no idea. That would crush my soul. Because yeah. Dave Grohl is essentially universal. Or if loved. like Shigeru Miyamoto was a fucking pedophile, like what would we do? How right. how would you look at Mario Zelda in all these games ever after that, knowing this? I, I don't yeah. think I could. Like, that's what yeah, I mean. Really that's the extreme example. And that's kind of what this has done to me. It started to make me thinking, like, I can't trust anybody. No, I granted, kind of always... that's how you should feel. Like, you shouldn't automatically just assume yeah. that everybody is the yeah. best person. But it also, like, keeps you a little bit worried that with the way the internet culture has become, that at any moment, the next person that you're so attached to is going to fall into that. Like, like for that me, list is still I've growing. Never... I've never really had like idols or like like. Well, no, but let's be let's be honest, dude. Because if, if fucking like Chris Evans is- came out or Robert Downey, well, Robert Downey Jr. also had his problems already, but but like if any major Avengers thing character like came out and being like a super fucking asshole, like anything like that, like there's still a perceived like fuck, like just that overall fuck me, Chris- like. Chris Evans is the one I think I would be traumatized the most. But I mean, in general, like just any person that like you really have like enjoyed their work for so long. Like there's a maiden flag in my background. If fucking Bruce Dickinson was the lead singer of that band was was found out to be a massive rapist and was doing all this shit to people behind the scenes, I'd be killed by that. In the same yeah. that like my girlfriend's the biggest David Bowie fan. If suddenly stories came out about how Bowie was fucking doing creepy shit back in the day. Like, again, it's, it's all uh, those perceptions. <laughs> like, it's and, all it, those it things. I know, but I mean, it's the sense of, like, all these people I that know. you spend so much time and you invested so much of your life and you're, you're like, you are who you are because of certain people. And if all of a sudden, like, there are people out there that were, their entire lives were created by what Bill Cosby did to them when they were kids. And I'm not saying, like, did to them physically. I mean, like, what, what he and his show did for them and how they shaped them. Like it's, people, just I, people molded themselves off of Cosby to be a better person, and it turned out that they were molding themselves after a fucking rapist. Like, what do you do with that? So there's a there was a list, there was a like survey done one time. I remember back a while ago where they were saying 
Who would you want your family to be like? Guess who the number, guess who the answer was? Yeah, Cosby. The Cosby's. And then they said, "Who is your family actually like?" Guess who it was? Simpsons. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so that was a good guess. It was like the thing is, it's so like fucked up that like because now like with DC, there's a lot of issues there because Ezra Miller, the guy who plays the Flash in yep. Justice League, got caught choking a fan. Yep. Like, and it wasn't even for anything justified. Well, and keep in mind, uh, too, all, this doesn't happen 15 years ago. Like, remember, Mel Gibson was getting a million fucking chances after all the shit he was doing. So this is more of yeah, a product he, he of, a of like constant. social media and, and yeah. the comfort that people can be anonymous behind these allegations, it, it, which helps so much the, now. It, it does. And like people can bitch over, you know what? I think this is a good thing because people should know what shitty people they're worshiping. Because, I mean, that's the thing example, too. I know that people are so afraid to speak out, but like, man, there is no time better now than to do it because there is such a way. And I'm not saying like, because it's easy. It's just because now people are willing to at least listen to you. Mark now it Wahlberg may depend differently. Actually, like if this is your workplace and you need to complain to your workplace, that still can be touchy depending on where you are. But I'm talking like just something that you can air, like a social media personality, like somebody who actually has name recognition that people would know of. There's, it's so available to you now to finally be able to speak about it and not feel like you're automatically going to be like i mean let's be honest people are going to send you threats no matter what because if you say anything about somebody you don't like i mean fuck we'll get we'll get to that in a minute but people are fucking sending death threats to a voice actor for existing right so we'll get to that in a moment let's finish up here but it's no it's like i i i've never really had like a lot of heroes or like role models because I've just come to know everyone's fucked up in their own certain way. Like, remember... But it doesn't mean uh, that there aren't people out there that you would be, like, crushed to hear that they were a piece of shit. It doesn't mean, like, you're immune to it. No, I I really think if I heard Chris Evans turn out to be a horrible person, I think I would be soul crushed because he is known to actually be a genuinely nice guy. He His brother's gay, and he's a huge, like, supporter of the LGBTQ community. And he's just known to be polite and, like, outgoing with fans but like er so every, I, everybody's got that list of people that if it came out that they were like pedophiles or rapists it would crush you it absolutely okay. would like some people's so list, not- some people's list is this big some people's are this big some are fucking this big like it's 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 the number it's one with all but if they're whores I, I have no problem because no but no but again we're uh, talking like fuck like and i'm not even talking like oh they like they like pushed a fan once i'm talking like serious shit like i'm not talking like this is the thing too i'm not talking about being flirtatious on twitter being a little bit overbearing in dms like that's one thing i'm talking like straight up physical and sexual abuse and things of that, especially when it comes to minors like we're talking like horrible unforgivable shit i'm more i'm more likely to forgive somebody who's just a bit of a creep on twitter than somebody who legitimately went to somebody's or coerced somebody to go into it into a hotel room and fucking did shit to them that's a whole other conversation yeah yeah like i said if someone's a whore or like a a perv no big deal but if it's a, a predator, well, it depends but i mean like because i mean like at the cast of our stuff of him just being a little bit creepy in dms like yeah that's kind of shitty and and that still comes down to that case of like i know that for some people it's hard to understand and i know and it's that whole thing of like you can get sevens easy now so you really want to push for the big one but again, like, I don't understand who people that you can get stuff, why you have to be a fucking weirdo. Like, you can still flirt with people in Twitter DMs and not sound like a fucking creep. And some of these messages makes yeah. people sound like, no one talks like this. What the fuck is this? Yeah. Or apparently, to- 10% of the population talks like this, and I just had no goddamn clue. <laughs> Actually, even Tom Holland, I think, I would be, like, a little soul crush if I found it. was like... Oh, he he turned out to be a predator. Like, oh, he's, he's just a fucking kid. In the MCU, you guys are missing the wrong one. It it would be um, Paul Rudd. That would be the oh, one. Oh, that would hurt. Yeah. Oh, that would hurt so much. Yeah, and then for all celebrities, Tom Hanks. That's the one where everyone would be oh, like, yeah, "I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, the world right. is over." Tom Hanks. Like, has there, done there, there's wrong so many him. extreme cases. Like, man, like obviously he's passed away now. But can you imagine if shit came out about Kobe? Like uh, what that what did, that would do? It did oh, come out Kobe. about Kobe. <laughs> no, I'm talking. I'm no, no, no. I'm talking like again the pedophile rapist stuff. Yeah, he had rape allegations, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. but didn't they also just kind of get like pretty much like it, disproven? 
Yeah, no, no, it, it was settled at a court. Yeah, it was settled okay. at a court, so no one really ever knew. Well, let, well, okay, well, let's let's I just go the extre- be- let's just go the most extreme case: proven LeBron. evidence of pedof- of like child sex abuse. What would that do now? Uh, okay, take any a name and put that like the worst possible thing: child fucking rape, and put yeah. that to any name that has that level. What would that do? Like, I think there is like. There was one guy in one of the Hall of Fames who was a convicted like pedophile, basically, and I think they're talking about like taking him out. If they, if they, yeah, I mean, it. straight up, you yeah. should at that point, anyway. Yeah, absolutely, you should. You can do whatever you yeah, want. I don't. You I don't care child, if he's the greatest hockey player of all time. Die. If he's the greatest yeah. hockey player of all time, I don't care. If Wayne Gretzky was was proven to be a pedophile, you get that motherfucker out. Yeah, like just that but simple. It's that. It's that. It's that, it's that horrendous a crime that I don't think it matters how good you were at something. No, it's I the, again. Even prisoners, most of the prisoners, most people in prison, are there because of something they did for their children. Whether it was stealing, whether it was like drug yeah, dealing, and, and then and then you find out that you hears these people that are in prison for fucking assaulting children, and you're like, yeah, this shit ain't flying. Yeah. No, I, love not, prison. I, I, I honestly think that in in like pedophiles, they should. It was a scarlet letter when they put an A on an adulterer. Well, they I mean, should have again. That's that's his whole thing. Tattooed or scarred into them somehow, so they're forever branded as a fucking pedophile. Because yeah. if I saw somebody like that, and they harm a child, I look at my knees. I, I I'd feel like I'd be within my right I, to punch him. I no, not I would punch. Not just no. You get. No, 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 no. You got to understand, you can't go too far because it's in the same vein that, like, you can say self-defense, but if you beat a guy, beat a guy's face in with a club, yeah, eventually there becomes aggravated assault. So, I mean, I'm I'm saying punch. And I'm saying that for a reason because, again, there is a line. Listen, I I look at my niece and I... No, Vish, Vish, I'm not playing this game. There is a point where it's too far. Someone think I'm going to do it? I wouldn't just kill them. Vish, you will be convicted. I'm telling you right now, I know what you're doing. (laughs) But if you kill somebody just because of a mark on them that says they're a pedophile, the, you will be thrown in prison. Charge. You will not get an assault charge. You will get a murder charge, and you will go to prison okay. for the majority if of your life. A, uh, okay, if it's if it's just a scar P on there on them, then yeah, just a punch in the face, most likely. No, 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 Vish. I don't care what the situation is. You will go, and quite frankly, you should go to jail if you kill somebody. If it's not in self defense. Because let's be honest, it's not in self-defense. If he's not doing anything to you and you just straight up kill him, that's fucking first-degree murder. You will go to prison. And as far as I'm concerned, you should. That's how the law is supposed to work. You can't just go walk up to somebody and just go, bam! Good thing about prison is they probably have Wi-Fi uh, a couple times a week, so you can still (laughs) podcast. Yeah, yeah. Wait, guys, I got 15 minutes of podcast. We gotta go into it. Oh, Mario, good. Thank, Madden, thank God the podcast is going to be so much better if you only have 15 minutes of Vish. God. <laughs> but I mean, to, to, fin- to finish right. off, because I do want to quickly talk about uh, the Laura Bailey stuff. Um, look, like I said, I'm not defending anybody. If they, if they really are having these allegations and they are true, then they should be dealt with. There's, there's no getting around that. All I'm trying to say is let's at least understand how we get there and what we need to do in order to try to head that off of the pass. Because I think yes. we need, because again, it starts young. I think sex ed, and especially here in the West, is not done well. It still needs to be done so much better. That causes an issue. We also don't, I, I think we don't handle things very well um, in, in the esports community or even in like the YouTube community. Like there's definitely not the steps that we need to take to help younger crowds get adjusted to this sort of thing. And I don't know how easy that is, but I was watching a video with a YouTuber called Vosh. I think I've told, told you about this guy once before. He had a stream last night where he had a prolific member of the Smash community talking about all these allegations. And the biggest thing that they said is that, honestly, either the government or companies themselves need to get more involved in in regulating these conventions because they're too Wild West. It's way too easy for people to just walk in and just do whatever. It's way too easy of a pedophile haven because you can be a 14-year-old and just walk into an anime convention and think nothing of it because you're too busy wanting to get up and close to this person you want to see. It's way too easy to fall into that trap. And I think there needs to be some better safeguards against that. And I'm not saying we need guards at every corner, but I'm saying that there needs to be at least 
a system, especially for guests that needs to have better training for people that do go to these, because there are people that will take advantage do, of their fan base. What I think would be a good idea is if they had a wristband with a certain color saying that like, oh, you're in the children's Honestly, stage. that's not a good idea. Because that advertises to pedophiles. No, but that would also deter. I, I think I think that can do more harm than good. Because I because I think unless you're like I said, unless you have like people watching at every corner, it's very easy for people to be like, oh, I'll wait for that person to leave the ho to leave the convention. Like they'll follow that person outside to like a restaurant and then do shit. Right? It's way too easy to 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 flag that person down. So I, I think that's too risky. But I, I know what you're I know what you're trying to say, and I think that's the problem is it's really hard to find a solution that can do more harm than good because sometimes everything that sounds good on paper has effects that we don't think about. Yeah. But in the end, uh, last, uh, th last thoughts from you guys before we move on? No, that's uh, all. Just leave the fucking kids alone and let them enjoy. I mean, at the that's end of the day, I'm like, gonna... like guys, like just, just, just be careful. Or at least like guys and girls, whether you're a YouTuber or a fan, just be careful. Just be yep. careful. That's that's all it takes. So um, the last thing I want to get to is uh, Michelle is the biggest piece of shit because he just left for a second, I think, to go to the washroom or something. So uh, let's talk trash about Vish for like the next five minutes. Um, <laughs> no, um, obviously, I mean, we've we've had a bunch of Me Too stuff and it hasn't meant that it's the only like controversy that's been going on. Obviously, the last of two has been a controversial topic really since the leaks have come out. Now that the game's out, it's continued to be as such because, again, it's a divisive issue. I'm not here to talk about the game itself, the story, the inherent people that are transphobic, racist, homophobic, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this has more to do with one specific case that's happening now. Uh, I talked last week about how I thought the fallout from either Neil Druckmann or Troy Baker having their own thoughts, because we talked last week. Again, Troy, stop being a snowflake. We love you. We, we, we really like your stuff. Like, this isn't about you. Don't worry about it. And now the flip side has happened where the people that really don't give a fuck about any sort of pleasantries are now sending death threats to Laura Bailey, who is the voice actress for Abby, who, again, is a very divisive character in this game without going into spoilers. Yeah. Um, and again, I don't know how many times we need to say this. It's pretty much implied. There is no... There is just no case in my mind that it makes it okay to just send people death threats online. I don't think... No. Because if that point, if that person's online and they're doing that horrendous shit, they're being taken offline now. I don't think there is an actual logic, like logical or justifiable reason to go onto a social media platform, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever the fuck, and send death threats to a person. And especially in the case of Laura Bailey, who all she did was voice act a fictional character who might have done something that they didn't like. That doesn't mean you get to threaten that person. If anything, <laughs> if anything, you should find like some weird way to send a message. Like here, here, if you really want to run a stick it to Abby, because that's who your problem really is with. It's not with Laura Bailey. It's with Abby or more specifically the writers, but that's a whole, but I don't think you should be death threatening the writers either. No, don't. If you really that's want, if you really want to take a shot at Abby so bad, here's what you do. You get to the point where you can play as Abby and you just spend over and over again, jumping her off a cliff and watching her die. That's your solution. <laughs> Otherwise, stop being a retard. Because yeah. sending death threats doesn't do anything. We said it before, you failed already at making this game a failure because it broke records. The, sale dropped, the sales may have dropped, but I think that's more indicative of the fact that everybody who played that game was going to get it at launch. I don't think it means that much otherwise. Because, yeah. like, apparently sales have dropped, like, 80% in some places. I don't think that's a big deal because they already broke a single weekend record. And, I mean, if you already sold 4 million-plus copies, you're doing good. So yeah, you're good. You, you're, you're good. Um, at the end of the I day, can't... I just I don't see why anybody, apart from people who have some serious mental issues, that is a whole other conversation because that is impossible to solve. But without yeah, having that, like you fall into two camps. You either have some real problems, or you just think it's funny. In which case, you're just an idiot. Like you're either you either have problems that we can't fix, or you're an idiot, which we can fix by you know taking you off the platform. Yeah. 
I mean, both should so, result in you being taken. Like, a lot of these people are probably getting banned because if they get shown to be doing these things, they should be getting banned. That's how it works. But So this is remind me of... There's this one Star Trek movie where Captain Kirk and Captain Picard that's exact, met each other. Yeah, that's exactly one of the original cases of that shit. Yeah. So in this movie, it's a, it's a bad movie. I think Chris, you and I watched... Well, had on the background. I mean, the movie is not that important. The yeah. only the only part that matters is that Kirk is killed in that movie, and people fucking and people like, actually sent death threats to Malcolm McDowell. Yeah, for killing for his character that he played in a fictional I mean, movie. Yeah. yeah, for killing another fictional character while the actor is still alive. He got yeah. four fucking death threats for killing for his character killing Captain Kirk. Even though both him and William Shatner are very much alive, he actually full of got death threats. And I was fucking dying when I first heard about that because I was never really a Star Trek fan. Well, you, at first you I, think, wow, that's ridiculous. But then you really understand the scope of what that actually means. Yeah, it's like crazy. Na- like now, it's, it's just, it's an unacceptable thing no matter how you slice it. I mean, it goes back to that whole thing of like, you can tell that a lot of these people must have mental issues because they can't seem to distinguish fantasy from reality. Because, no offense, I understand that the person that Abby affects in this game meant a lot to people. But it shouldn't mean so much that you're going to go as far as to real-life death threat a real-life person that had nothing to do with it. Like, just on the basis of them having a voice to it. Laura Bailey didn't decide to do what Abby does in that game. Yeah. Like, there's there's no excuse for that. And it goes back still, to even further than that, where, like, what happens if Laura Bailey kills herself now over this? Because it's happened recently where, like, wrestler Hana Kimura killed herself because she did something on a reality TV show, which, by the way, her mom came out and said was staged because, shocker, reality TV is fake. So was, people, was, did, people sent this woman death threats and told her to kill herself over and over again because of something that was staged, and she did. She was only 21. So like keep that just... in mind, too, that this isn't just you ruining somebody's day. You could ruin somebody's life, literally. End it. Or end some fucking life. And that's the point where I get, this is where it should be a zero-tolerance policy. I don't care no longer about freedom of speech at that point. And this is, and you remember, I'm the guy that is in favor of fighting for, like, any, I, I still believe to this day that hate speech is considered freedom of speech. You shouldn't be deplatformed for just saying something that people don't like. But if we're talking to the point of actual threat of violence to people, that should be getting you banned because that shouldn't be acceptable. It's one thing to say, fuck these people for the color of their skin. It's another thing to say, I'm going to kill this person because of the color of your skin. Those are two inherently different things. See, the thing is with hate, it's there is nothing like even like the KKK, there's nothing stopping you from joining a, a group like that or having speech like that or having views like that. There's nothing stopping you from that. But as soon but as you act upon it, then we have a fucking like, problem. Like, here's the thing. Here, here's, here's like blanket thing. And I'm not trying to turn this into a hate speech thing because I really want to stick to what on topic. But if you join the KKK, I don't necessarily have an issue. But if then if you're actively trying to assault or like... Fu- like fuck up people's lives and i'm not talking like just being an a- like just saying mean things i'm talking straight up like actually like physically abusing people a whole nother ball game but in the in the end going back with laura bailey it really just comes down to i don't think there should be any tolerance for you telling somebody that you're going to kill them whether you mean it or not it shouldn't matter because i would never go out there to anita sarkeesian somebody that i still have issues with i need to go back and watch some of her stuff now that i'm a little more clarity of mind than i used to be but I would still, at the time that I was at my worst, where I was the furthest to the right that I've ever been before I kind of drifted myself back because I caught myself going too far, I still then would okay. never have sent a death threat to Anita Sarkeesian or anybody I disagree with because I'm well enough equipped in my head to know that that's not something you do. No. Which is why I get onto the thing of like, people are just that fucking far gone that you can't bring them back. There were just people that were that fucked up. 
for these people, it's even worse because they're not even mad at somebody for their own opinion. They're mad at a girl who is the voice of a character, and they can't dis- distinguish that she is not that character. There, there's a real I issue because, the, like, that, that's, that's, that's where the politicians can bring in the violence co- or video games cause violence argument because clearly there are people that are like this that can't fucking figure out the difference. Yeah. Like the messages that she had in screenshotted, they were like, fuck you, you did this. You know, spoiler in yeah. there, but. I can't like believe they're, they're, you did this. It's they're like, saying I she killed. This. They're saying I'm she like, killed this person. Yeah, I'm a voice actor. I didn't actually do this. This is a. And story. even then, like Jeff Goldblum in Death Wish, brutally rapes and murders a woman. He didn't actually kill and rape a woman. Yeah, at least uh, that we know of at this point. Well, Jeff Goldblum's a good guy. From I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm leaving it I open. Know, I, know. I don't trust anybody. But, it, but it's but it's that I argument. Haven't. We're talking we're talking like real life fi- like feature films. Like you got the Saw movies. You have the fucking like Hills Have Eyes or Devil's Rejects or you have fucking Hostel. Do these people should these people be given threats because of what they do on a on a picture? No. So how is a fictional game where it's literally just their voice? Yeah. And that's where it just gets even worse. Like. I, like, the Star Trek thing is silly in a sense, but at least you, like, saw the person actively do something. It's still not right, but at least they have that excuse. The Last of Us 2 thing has no excuse. Because Laura Bailey literally doesn't look like Abby, so there's literally nothing apart from the thing that comes out of her fucking mouth called her voice that has anything to do with her. That's literally her only contribution to it. She didn't write the script. She didn't choose to do what she what the character does. She has no part in it. She's just the person that was hired to fill that role. It could have been anybody. It could have been an unknown. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's just it's ridiculous. Fuck. It's so fucking unnecessary. And it's... She's just doing her job. She's it's doing what like she was she paid to do. It. She clocked in like any of us wouldn't do our job. The difference is, is she happened to be doing a job that day that involved a character killing off somebody that people liked. And I just, I don't fucking get it. Like, come on, guys. Like, gamers have a, as a whole, have a shitty, creepy, creepy reputation as it is. Like, why are you enforcing that shit? It's it's what makes it so like, easy. We're supposed to. It, it makes it incredibly easy for people to now to point at us and be like, "See, gamers are racist. Gamers gamers are homophobic, or they are transphobic, or they're prone to violent outbursts like this." Because again, you it's it's like any it's like any group. You look at the extremes first. Yep. Yeah. There's uh like unfortunately like I'll just say right here, during that time, only ten percent of the Germans were Nazis or Nazi supporters. The problem is that 10% made the other 90 irrelevant. Well, I mean, what do you think happened to Japanese people in Canada or in the U.S. as soon as World War II started? Like, yeah. There's a whole thing. I mean, hell, what happened after 9-11 to anybody who was brown? Yep. Like, yep. We, we, uh, we, 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 I, all I, the, we all I, look at the actions I, of a few to be reminiscent of that. the actions of every. That's our that's our problem as as a society, and that's and that's a human problem. Like that's something that we may not be able to fix in total. Yeah. I mean, at least and, at least until we just we set off all the nukes and then we just kind of end everything, you know. And then then starts a uh, fucking like nuclear mutant apocalypse. Uh, we get to play Fallout real life, guys. Fallout seventy six real life. Who's that's in? adorable. I'm not surviving that. I'll be the ghoul that you have to kill. If I, oh, if I, I actually want to kill you as a ghoul, can you be a good yeah. ghoul and be on my side? I'll, 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 be, I'll be that like detective Claude ghoul from Claude Fallout 4. Okay, I like it. I'll, I'll well, wear a fucking Claude. fedora, I'm down. <laughs> you're not Adam Indiana Jones, you're just Adam G. Adam uh, Radical. Please, you're not bitch, Radical Jones. please. Fucking California cops were doing the fedoras a lot longer before fucking all that shit. Indiana. Come on. Come on. Before Han Solo. But anyways, uh, any last thoughts before we set this off? Because I had a hard out here at 10 and we're a couple minutes past that. No, that's okay. all I got. Oh, it's... um. People suck. I, I, I think it just, it just yeah. amounts to people suck, stop sucking so much. Yeah. Essentially, yeah, uh, just... This isn't going to go honestly, away anytime soon either, and I don't even think The Last of Us 2 is done. I think we still have more shit to come with this. 
Because like this this one's Leave not going away. Leave fucking girl alone. She just did her job. And frankly, from what I hear, while there's flaws with the story, the game itself is actually good. Enjoy the game, enjoy the moment, and don't be a fucking dick. Or here, That's all here, here's an idea. Yeah. It's just a game, bro. Calm just down. Game, bro. Yes. Calm down. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Well, oh my god, Sephiroth. Like the voice actor for Sephiroth is gonna get death threats, isn't he? Why? Because he kills a bitch. Oh, man, Spoiler. man, they better hope they no. better hope Kef they better hope they never do a full remaster of six because whoever plays Kefka is getting fucked. That motherfucker causes the death of several children in that game. Holy shit. Yeah, he touched the children, though. That was good. I mean, no, he just broke I mean, the we, world in half. I mean, let's be honest. Okay, given given, given the way Kefka is, I wouldn't put it past him. So a creepy clown. But again, that's yeah. that's. I, I, I'm I'm not going to assume, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hold the possibility out there. <laughs> but anyways, well, yeah. That's oh, yeah. uh. But anyways, that's well. You were fucking interrupting me, so I gotta wonder, right? But anyways, uh, that's gonna do it for this anyways, episode. God. I fucking hate you. <laughs> All right. So because I have the ability, can I mute him ahead of time? Ah, I won't waste my time on that shit. Uh, that's going to do it for the podcast, guys. So uh, thank you so much for checking us out. And um, yeah, let's, let's, just, let's just be better to people. Let's start th from there. That sounds like a good thing yeah. to start with. Make gamers great again. Let's not do it. <laughs> uh, you know what? In a way, I don't want us to do that anymore because I think it also promotes what, what MAGA is. I think in a way. So it's, it's kind of one of those weird things. But uh, that's why yeah. I like that. Just, just let's be better. Let's be better to people. I like that. Let's be less shitty. Yeah. So that that's going to do, guys. Thank you so much for checking us out, and uh, we'll see you next week.